So in this video, we're gonna be making a simple side table out of ash. Now, what sets this one apart from my other projects is the tabletop. We're gonna be making it out of eight quarter ash. So I have this about eight inch wide piece of eight four ash, and I'm just gonna be cutting it down into the rough sections. Now, it proved quite challenging to get through with my simple Ryobi a skill saw, so I had to finish it off with a handsaw. And so once I got through these thick boards with the handsaw, I took them over to the table saw and cut them down to just over four inches wide. Now I chose to do four inches because my jointer only has a six inch wide uh, blade and so I wanted to try and do this in the fewest pieces that are nice and common size in the easiest way possible if that makes any sense. And as you can see, there was a lot of boards to go through and it was it was quite a fun actually, I, I won't lie. Trying to joint all these faces was very entertaining. From there, I could flatten the, the opposite face in the planer and then clean up the other side on the table saw. And the last thing to do before starting to construct the tabletop was to cut the dowels. Now I'm using dowels not for strength, but purely for alignment in putting together this tabletop. And so to put in the dowels, I had to use my dowel it jig from, uh, I believe, I don't know if it's Rockler that makes them or just Rockler that sells them, but it's a self-centering dowel jig that all you have to do is mark your matching lines between boards and it allows you to perfectly center dowels into your board. This helped me align my boards perfectly and made the glue up so much easier. So with a little bit of glue on the dowels and then painting on a bit of glue between the boards, I've got super strong bonds. Now I did these boards in two sections at first so that I'd be able to plane them down to their final thicknesses and save myself a lot of cleanup time. And you can see I did them in about 12 inch sections which fits perfectly through my planer. And then from there, I could put the whole panels together. And once I was done, I could take my brand new skill saw and chop off the ends to get it to its final length. And so with the tabletop drying for a few days, I got working on the base. Now what you're seeing me do here is chop down my legs, which are that same 8-4 chunk of ash, and then plane down both sides so that are perfectly square and the same thickness all around. And so once they were all planed down, I chopped off one end so that they were all the exact same length. and then got started on the stretchers. So for the stretchers, I'm just using 4-4 ash, and you can see they're quite short pieces. I'm able to get two stretchers out of each of these boards, which made very good use of materials. And so once I had the stretchers to final width, I could cut them down to their final length so that all eight stretchers would be the same length. So then once I had the stretchers all figured out, I got into cutting the tapers on the legs. Now these are about a half inch deep by four inches tall and made for quite an interesting look once they were finally cut. Put everything together, I went back to the trusty dowel jig, marked out my spots on my stretchers, drilled in two holes just so that the piece wouldn't twist by accident, and then drilled corresponding holes into the legs. Now at this point on the lower ones, it took quite a bit of figuring out, but it was pretty exciting when I finally got everything together. Yes! And from there I could do just a quick softening of the corners on the legs, and I could put the whole thing together. Now I have to say using the dowels made this just so much easier. Uh, I was originally planning to do mortise and tenon, but my skill levels aren't quite there yet. So dowel joinery will have to do for now, but I do definitely have plans to build something else in the future utilizing mortise and tenon. But like I said, dowels are quite a nice, simple and straightforward way to put it all together. 
And now these bottom slats, you actually won't see them again in the video. Uh, they did end up making it into the final piece, but for some reason, once I finished the project, I forgot to show any footage of them actually on the table. So if you go to my website, you'll be able to see the final piece with the slats in it. And to attach the top, I just used figure eight fasteners. Now, once the top was dried, I could go and cut these little relief bevels on the bottom. Now again, this made it was super easy now that I'd gotten this new skill saw and was just such a fun thing to do. And then I could go and clean up things with a little bit of um, var salt and just clean up all the dust. And then I went and started staining. Now I know some of you purists out there don't believe in staining wood. And for a long time I didn't either. But I just think in a piece like this, there is... It, it just looks so much better with that higher contrast. And to be fair, I could have gone out and bought, made this tabletop out of walnut, which would have given, given a similar color, but that would have been upwards of a couple hundred dollars, and I'm just not at that point yet. So the stain went on super nice, using this gel stain was absolutely beautiful, and the finish was just amazing. From there, I could put on a little bit of that Verathane oil finish that we used in the last in the maple side table, and then finish that off with a beeswax coating. 